Okay, hi everyone. Uh, this video is for the start of section six. So for most of this section, for most of section six, I'm expecting you to read through the material by yourself. And I'm just popping up in this video at the start of the section just to give a kind of general introduction to what we're doing in this section. But all the mathematics I'm expecting you to read through by yourself. So in this section we have three simple Markov chain examples uh, for insurance problems from actuarial science. And uh, so these are to do with like if you've got insurance on a car or something. So in the first subsection, 6.1, we talk about a no claims discount model. So this is the idea that if you don't crash your car very often, uh, then the insurance company is prepared to make your insurance cheaper because you seem to be safe. And so in subsection 6.1, we have a very simple model where there are three stages of no claims discount. And if you don't crash in a year, you go up a stage, unless you're at the best stage, in which case you stay there. And if you do crash, you go down a stage, unless you're at the worst stage, in which case you stay there. And the very simple model is that each year you crash with probability a quarter and don't crash with probability three quarters. And in section 6.1, we show that which stage you're at can very simply be modeled as a Markov chain, because whether or not you go up or down depends on where you are now, and it depends on if you crash this year, but it doesn't depend on the history. So we have a Markov property, because it depends where you are now, that doesn't depend on the history. So in subsection 6.1, we have a simple Markov chain. In subsection 6.2, we look at a different model for accidents, where the company thinks that the probability you have an accident depends on your whole history. So how long you've been driving for, and in how many of the years you've been driving, you've had an accident. And so it's tempting to model whether or not someone has an accident this year as a stochastic process. But the problem is that doesn't have the Markov property, because it's depending on the whole history of whether you've had crashes or not, not just the single previous state. So we don't have a Markov property there, which would seem bad. However, what's shown in subsection 6.2 is if we instead look at the total number of accidents to date, and the total number of accidents to date is a Markov chain and does have the Markov property. So the lesson from 6.2 is that sometimes you have to be a bit careful to, or, or a bit clever to spot where a Markov property is in a model, and it's not always the most obvious thing that is a Markov chain. Subsection 6.3 goes back to the no claims discount model again. Here it's one with four stages. Uh, but this time, uh, if somebody crashes two years in a row, then they go down two stages, not just one stage that year. That could be a decision that the company might make. So again, you have this thing that because which stage you go to might depend on the two previous years, that means, again, the most obvious stochastic process doesn't have the Markov property because it can depend on the history going two years back. However, as is shown in subsection 6.3, you can be clever again by using a slightly different state space. In particular, if we have two different states for being at stage 3, one for stage 3 with a crash last year and one for stage 3 without a crash last year, and so by using a different state space rather than the obvious one, we managed to create ourselves a Markov process. So the lesson of subsection 6.3 is that although the obvious process might not be Markovian, sometimes we can change the state space to get a process that is a Markov chain. So those are the three examples in the notes for section 6, and which I'm expecting you to read through yourself, but that was just a short introduction to tell you what the mathematical lessons behind these examples are.